level that ship, coming through, and not pulling any more power, touchdown, slowly down with the collective, cycling, maintaining my track, and pedals maintaining my heading, slowly, 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 and we are all the way down. and welcome to another Anthelion Helicopters training video with Alex Chaunt and we, today we are going to continue on uh, from our uh, traffic patterns and our approaches uh, with the last of the regular approaches before we get into the crosswind stuff and this one is shallow approaches to a running landing. Uh, shallow approach, um, you know, in some ways it's much like an aeroplane approach, shall I say, and uh, a lot of times we are using it, or we would use it, I should say, uh, if we've got either some controllability issue um, or we've got a low power issue, you know, we've lost a cylinder or a mag or something like that, and uh, we want to, you know, land uh, above ETL to maintain efficiency in the rotor system. So, we'll be landing above ETL, um, so in our case, probably 25 knots, something around about there, and doing a running landing uh, on pad 3. Hopefully it is free, if it is free, to make sure that we, uh, you know, we don't uh, bash the tail into the ground or anything like that. We will be doing it absolutely level. So without further ado, let's get going and start talking about and doing some shallow approaches and running landings. Okay, we're just going to take off here again at pad 3 and go through this time. We're going through shallow approach running landings. So, like I briefly introduced, you know, shallow approach running landings theoretically are used more for situations when, for whatever reason, you are down on power, uh, you've got a suspected bolt somewhere, you've lost some tail rotor authority, something where you need to keep as much airspeed as possible, at least above ETL, uh, to run these things, run these skids along as uh, level as possible, uh, because you simply do not have the power or the authority to safely keep this air, get this aircraft into a hover and set it down uh, like normal. Uh, so this is, you know, a technique that's used for a variety of situations. Hopefully you never have to use it. Pat 3 clear land portals, yeah. If you never have to use it, but it is a very good one to learn. This one is absolutely key with setup, and it's all about that setup again, just like in a steep approach. But aircraft attitude, you know, we have to be as smooth as absolutely possible so that we, when we touch down, we keep the skids absolutely level and control the aircraft once the skids turn, uh, set down so we don't have no risk of dynamic rollover, which is a major one. We're going to do it on pad 3 here, which is pretty level. Uh, but obviously, in the real world, you might have to do it on some far more um, bumpy, shall we say, surfaces. Uh, we're not going to do that today, of course. We're just trying to teach some best practice and how to how to get going on it. So this first approach, warning lights up, gauge screen, pressure is good, coming down on collective right pedal, left cyclic. We're just going to set the approach, and we're not going to do the landing itself, but we're just going to set, set the shallow approach up just to find out where uh, ETL is, so I know the sort of the minimum speed I'm going to have to do here. Clear left, clear right. You know, my shallow approach profile is going to be much more up near my compass. Again, open to debate, but it's going to be much shallower than a normal approach. So that side picture is going to be way more up by my compass for this one. And the trick with this approach is really finding out with the wind direction it's doing to where ETL is on your aircraft, because that's where you don't want to go less than. So you can maintain the efficiency in the main and tail rotors so that you can touch down with a minimum amount of power possible. Hopefully that made sense. But that's the idea. So here I am coming along on final, and my side picture is pretty much where my compass is. We're pretty low, just avoiding the light fixtures here at the airport. But all I'm going to do now, and I'm past those light fixtures, is really trying to figure out where is ETL, where is ETL. We're slowing up, but I'm not slowing up. Still 40 knots. Where is it, where is it, where is it? You start to feel it now. As we're coming through 30... There it is, there it is, about 25 knots. So I'm just going to keep it coming forward now, and I've found out where it is. This would be the profile. However, we're just going to slowly bring it into a hover here. Again, remember, because you're shallow, you, when you're practicing this approach, you do not want to suddenly put on this tail because your tail is probably pretty close to the ground and you do not want to risk it whatsoever. But at least now I know where ETL is. I know, right, that's the speed that I want to stay above because I've got to keep that same manifold pressure in for the purpose of this video. You know, whatever manifold pressure I've got on approach, that's what I've got. I cannot allow it to pull any more. It's always a good, you know, way to do it is you're restricted on manifold pressure. That's what you're land with. So you better stay above ETL. Otherwise, suddenly you'll require a lot more manifold pressure when you go below ETL. All right, let's go and do it for real now. One nice upgrade screen, push jump is good. Tell Alex for 
Charlie Sierra, pad 3, left uh, traffic please. Copy, Charlie Sierra, pad 3, Cliff Taker. Cliff Taker, Charlie Sierra. As you can see, pad 3 is nice and long, which is kind of useful. Uh, this never used to be here a few years ago. Pad 3 was one of those little tiny ones, and uh, much more difficult to do any sort of running landing on, because you end up bouncing down all the dirt, so they built this pad specifically for this type of training, which was pretty good of them a few years ago. It makes this a lot easier, it means we don't have to go and start using runways places and tearing up people's runways for it, so... This is always a tricky one for aeroplane pilots, we find, because it kind of goes against everything that aeroplane pilots do. They don't like, you know, they uh, they love pulling back on uh, on their yoke when they're coming into land to land on the rear wheels and slow things down more. And we have to keep telling them, push forward, push forward, push forward, keep those skids level. And they don't like that. So uh, it's kind of funny and counterintuitive for them. Patrick Cleveland. Patrick Cleveland, yeah. Uh, but that's what we have to do. So here we are coming around onto our downwind, and we're just going to set up like normal again, but this time we are actually going to do the landing properly. And you know, obviously I'm going to aim to touch down uh, at the beginning of the pad, so that I've got the most run on possible. And once I do touch down, I don't want to slam down that collective, I want to really, really, you know, do it gently so I don't, the helicopter doesn't want to just sort of nosedive into the ground. Um, so just gently come down the collective, cycling just to keep your track, and then use the pedals to uh, to maintain your heading so you don't risk any dynamic rollover. So here we go. Crossing 3-0, warning lights out, gauge to the green, pressure and temperature is good, coming down the collective again. A bit of cyclic right pedal, keep that profile. I sound like a broken record player, but hopefully after a number of times that I've said this, you guys will start to appreciate it to keep the flight attitude all the time when you're coming. Alright, so here we are down on our base leg, clearing left to right for our final, coming around on final. Everything's still looking good, where it needs to be. Shallow approach set up. Rolling out onto my final, and here we go, I'm with my compass. Looking pretty good here, I'm doing about 60 knots right now, so you know, this is a, a good speed if you had some issues with a tail rotor. Uh, probably going even faster, and I would probably be landing on the runway at that point, probably 70 knots. But anyway, here we are, starting to slow up. And here we go, slowing up, slowing up, slowing up, slowing up, slowing up, feeling where ETL is. Coming through 40 knots. As soon as I feel ETL, I'm going to level at attitude, because right now it's got a slightly tail low attitude. But here we go, see I've, now I've got ETL, I'm going to just come up slightly on the power, level that ship, coming through. And not pulling any more power. Touch down, slowly down with the collective. Cycling maintaining my track, and pedals maintaining my heading. Slowly, 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 here we go. And down, and we are all the way down. So you notice there, as I came in, once I'd found ETL, I then leveled the aircraft, just so that my profile was absolutely flat. These skids do have curving up at the front, but however, you you know, you definitely don't want to be bouncing, and if you start bouncing then you could uh, obviously roll, so absolutely important you keep a level profile with that. So, again, shallow approach, running landing, we know what it's for, maintain above ETL, setup is everything, once you've found ETL, level the aircraft, pick your spot, keep your peripheral vision going, as soon as you touch down, with a level attitude, Slowly down on the collective, use the cyclic to maintain your track and the pedals to maintain your heading till you come to a full stop. Once you're at full stop, full down collective. I hope you guys got something out of this and learned something about shuttle approaches, running landings. I hope you guys never have to use them in real life. But if you do, good luck, keep practicing, stay safe, fly safe, and I'll see you next time.